At the time that this project was launched, I was maintenance and engineering manager. And we were facing uh, at least 60% of our chiller equipment, which provides cooling water for our POST manufacturing process. We, we were facing at least 60% of our equipment, which was beyond its useful life. They were not reliable systems. The system was actually constructed originally in a very incremental fashion. Okay, so we started with one generation of plant, now we're expanding really a totally different system there. And we're again expanding totally different system. Okay. So we really had three systems, um, three different generations uh, to worry about. We had separate chilling systems based on the life of the plant. So you had your original 88 stuff. We came back in on the tail end and added a few more pieces of equipment. We had our 94 edition that had some air-cooled chillers. And then when we put the original 300-ton chiller in, we tried merging some of those systems and through the, through the piping exchange and just the overall length and inefficiency of the system, it was difficult to make sure that from one side of the plant to the other you were getting consistency. There are certain systems in the plant um, that are legacy systems. We cannot operate our business without those systems. Um, the chiller system, our cooling water system, is one of them. Uh, should anything happen within that system, we are just down and we're facing lead times to get in new equipment or repairs or whatever is required in, in that respect. So we had the, the option of replacing equipment like for like, or we could put in something better that would actually increase our returns in the future, and that's what we decided to do. The only question outstanding was, what would that system look like, and who would we select as the vendor to supply that service? We decided to go with Train. Train is a provider of many things, but of those things, Turnkey is one of our uh, projects that we can provide. And that project uh, in a turnkey fashion means that the customer who has needs can rely upon a firm like Train to take care of those needs from beginning to end, from soup to nuts. And that is that when they engage Train, we came in and solicited their needs, we helped them resolve and understand their own needs and then we provided a solution for those needs in a way that they could understand it and so that they saw direct application of what we were providing to meeting their own needs. It wasn't something we were just selling them on the market and they wanted one. It clearly was customized to meeting where they were and what their needs were for their specific operation. Our maintenance requirement on chiller equipment was very high, it was very unreliable, and we expected uh, failures, major failures in the system. In fact, we had some, some equipment in the system that was not functioning. Uh, so instead of replacing that, went to train and said, let's run some numbers uh, uh, to look at, uh, number one, adding a single source system to the plant. Um, number two, sizing the system such that we can increase our capacity uh, in the future, so future growth. Um, number three, efficiency, a system that would operate very efficiently. In fact, it's operating more efficiently than we expected uh, at first, so it's beating the numbers in, in those terms. Those were the major things that we were looking for, and also system redundancy. In the beginning of the project, we formed two teams. The teams were small at first, and that was Don Farrow with AIPC, and Scott Yates, our account manager, and myself as a project developer. And the three of us sat and spent many times at a table understanding what could be improved with the systems that they already had, and getting Don to try to vocalize what could be better about the processes that they have, and then that created needs 
Then we determined a solution in a very preliminary fashion. And then the team grew from that point. We brought on additional people. Don brought on Todd Lewis, an engineer who worked in his group, uh, to help with laying out the project. He also brought on Don Mercer, who is an electrical expert that provides uh, uh, expertise in his engineering group, and Barry Mathia, who is the maintenance supervisor for the group. And so those three additional people, along with the facility maintenance director, Manoj, and they formed a team that got a little bit larger. We also brought on Adam Johnson for our team. And then we also brought in an outside consultant, and that was uh, Neil Bartley. And uh, together, we formed a more deliberate design around a solution. And that was a schematic design. Then in turn, we went to formal design. Then we also enlarged the team again to subcontractors, mechanical contractors, people who built a metal building that we had and got pricing for the whole job so that we knew that our pricing was correct. The offering the train was going to put together then had a design detailed enough that we knew we had priced it correctly for the owner. Once the contract was written around that design and that pricing, then our fulfillment team got engaged and that was Mark Rawson who is our project manager. And then we had control individuals who took care of the control systems on the job. So the team started out small and then it grew as the need required for expertise. And then at the end we had people who checked to make sure that the needs were taken care of, that the solution that was provided actually met the needs and it fulfilled successfully what the customer had asked for. Albert Einstein said, right, he said, if I had 24 hours to solve a problem, I would spend the first 23 planning. Uh, that's important, and I saw a lot of that here. Uh, there was a lot of time spent up front planning the project. I've, I've got to say that the, the team effort, uh, the cooperation that we had with, with, with train, the meetings, uh, your response to any concerns that we had during the project uh, was totally on point and you've got to have that. This was a totally turnkey project. Uh, we had input from Barry Mathia, we had input from Todd and we had input from Bob, um, primarily from Barry, but this project was a totally turnkey a partnership. When, whenever we talk about turnkey, and I think that's the wave of the future for this company, these partnerships where we look to bring in the expertise and work on a technical platform with, with companies that have a certain expertise to tell us this is what it means to, to, to pursue this direction or that direction. Those are some of the efficiencies that I expected from working in a turnkey fashion like this that were definitely delivered 150%. Very positive. I think the biggest challenge was at the beginning of the project when we're searching out the needs of the customer is to understand their processes and understand what they do on a daily basis to make sure that what we're going to provide as a solution actually intermeshes with their work uh, seamlessly. And so as an outside firm working under a turnkey fashion, we had to come up alongside their operating plant, learn about what they did to make sure that we didn't get in the way, we weren't a uh, hindrance to anything that they were doing inside the plant, and also perform our own duties, uh, you know, intermeshed with them in a transparent way. I think what was unique about it was basically we had to build our plant next to the existing production facility, and through that, you know, we had uh, piping tie-ins and things like that that we had to do and complete that did not affect the production. They still had to make pasta and uh, you know what we had to do was, was sit next to them and, and not interrupt that. I think that was one of the unique, big, biggest unique things. We have to do our work but yet we have to be we have to be visible but invisible meaning we have to get done with our work but yet nobody's supposed to know we were kinda in that area in doing the work. 
new system uh, was built and kind of the first thing is a new metal building put outside the, the existing pasta plant and uh, it included three train chillers that uh, produce cold water. Um, nominal 600 ton actual capacity with a third chiller that was fully redundant. Uh, had ancillary pumps and cooling towers that completed the system. It's a very efficient application. It's uh, water-cooled chillers, which from our industry is the most efficient you can get. And it does provide a common chilled water. Water is a product that's easy, it's plentiful, it's inexpensive way to transport heat. It's heat rejection. So from that perspective, the application's correct. What you have here is pretty much the best we got. As far as efficiency and availability, price point on equipment. This system is what I call an intelligent system. Okay, because uh, it is providing us with the information that we need to know uh, that it is operating properly, efficiently. Uh, it lets us know uh, when maintenance service is, is, is due. It lets us know if the system has problems. That is really the wave of, of the, the future for all of our technical systems. Uh, we have CDC installed on our production lines which, which record downtime and give us information on our uh, various production variables. So intelligent systems that talk to us, that communicate uh, with us, that basically run themselves, uh, which is the case with this, with this uh, train system, tell us what it needs, that's where we're going. That's absolutely how we have to operate in the future. That's why the system is so essential to our, to our operations. The solution that we provided was uh, provided fourfold efficacy to the project, and that was that the new plant provided a uh, new equipment that had longevity. It provided an efficient way to uh, provide chilled water for less energy input. It provided uh, redundancy, which means the uh, equipment will continue to run and there would be a question in their mind that chilled water would always be available to them. And it also provided some additional capacity, which means that if they have some future growth on the production equipment, they don't have to put in a new plant. This one will provide extra for, to take care of those new processes. I think the true benefit is where if they ever want to expand, they probably got enough <laughs> they probably got enough cooling to, to do whatever they wanted to do. By doing this project we were able to position ourselves both for further growth and have the redundancy we need. And in the process we eliminated a number of pieces of equipment that, that were high maintenance type items. And so now with all this consolidated we'll we'll be able to maintain and also maintain our consistency which will give us better quality. From the maintenance standpoint, we're not going to have to maintain as many pieces of equipment. The maintenance time, the uh, production downtime, the lost production that we would have faced as a result of our previous system and its condition and the resources that we had to devote to that system, which would have only increased with time, that's no longer a factor.